What are you, little soul? Another of Cain's creatures come to taunt this bound spectre. I did not intend to disturb your rest. Rest? A body is needed for sleep. Flesh and bones are required to recline. No, child. All I may do is watch and remember, ceaselessly conscious as this wretched world's history unfurls. Ghastly past, insufferable future, are they one and the same? Am I always here? Once an impressive sorceress, Ariel oversaw the Circle of Nine as Balance Guardian. The role of Balance Guardian was the most important duty out of the nine key positions, for he or she who is called upon to serve the Pillar of Balance is handed a momentous task of preserving the life of the world. They are to ensure no corrupting influences infiltrate their ranks or taint their peers. If any nefarious force happens to penetrate the circle, then they are expunged by the Balance Guardian. Ariel was born at some point in Nosgoth's early past. Although her exact date of birth is unclear, we can guess she is no older than 500 years at the time of Blood Omen 1. This is because we know that during Vorador's onslaught against the Seraphan, he murdered a human balance guardian that came before Ariel. Whether Ariel was born as the direct successor to this guardian, or years later, following the death of another guardian, is left to speculation. Nevertheless, Ariel was summoned, and the powers afforded by her role gifted to her a certain immortality, a longevity that allowed her to live for centuries. It is said that her magic influenced the regulation of other magic in Nosgoth, and that her prowess for sorcery was matched only by her beauty. She had captured the heart of her fellow guardian Nutraptor, the Mentalist, and the two embarked on a romantic relationship, which tragically ended when Ariel was cut down. The cult of Hasha Gig seduced and manipulated the circle behind the scenes. They sought to overthrow the pillars, and achieved this by taking possession of the Death Guardian Mortanius, using his body as a means to murder Ariel. Given the injuries sustained to her head, she was most likely stabbed in the eye, with half her face stripped off, exposing her skull. The dark entity who had orchestrated Ariel's death had found a perfect opportunity to bring down the pillars by ruining the controversial love affair between the two guardians. It saw the relationship between Ariel and Napraptor as a chance to poison and devastate the circle. Each of the nine are symbiotically bound to one another. When Napraptor discovered her corpse, he was so overcome with grief and plagued by suspicions of treachery from within the circle, he plunged into a madness that unleashed a telepathic shockwave which tainted each of the other guardians with his derangement. Now corrupted, the sorcerers turn their powers to dark purposes, and the pillars, absorbing the circle's corruption, fell into utter decay. Into this poisoned world Cain was born, Ariel's successor as Balanced Guardian, he too forsaken and infected by the same spiritual disease that overwhelmed the circle, thus rendering him incapable of fulfilling his duties. Ariel's death did not spell her end however, as her disembodied spirit became tethered to the pillars. Usually, when a balanced guardian dies, their soul briefly returns to their pillar before being spun back into the wheel of fate to undergo the natural cycle of reincarnation into this world. However, the corruption of the pillars had frozen this process for Ariel and she was doomed to be trapped here until balance was at last restored. Her fate, as well as the fate of all Nosgoth, rested in Cain's hands. Ariel had pinned all her hopes on her successor, guiding him to assassinate the Pillar Guardians. In an ironic twist of fate, she made her lover Nutraptor Cain's first kill, and although it pained her to command Cain to murder the man she loved, she knew the circle needed to be cleansed. Each time Cain returned to the Pillars, Ariel was on hand to offer advice to the young vampire about the upcoming Guardians he would face all whilst keeping him ignorant of his true role as Balanced Guardian. She believed, rather naively, that when all was said and done, he would nobly sacrifice himself to restore the pillars, and thus bring the world back from ruin. Deep down, however, she suspected Cain would reject this outcome, which is probably why she was not entirely honest with him from the start. In Cain's first conversation with her, she suggests that assassinating the members of the Circle will offer him peace. 
Kane thought this to mean that he might potentially find a cure for his vampirism without realizing that the peace Ariel offers is death. When the time came for Kane to make his terrible decision, Ariel paid the price for her manipulation. From the moment Kane refused to sacrifice himself, Ariel despised him, for his choice meant that she was now damned to spend the rest of eternity haunting the fallen pillars she once served. Following this, she fell into a deep despair, becoming vengeful, blaming Cain for her everlasting torment. Prior to the events of the first Soul Reaver, such was her depression that she came to accept the inevitable fact that she would be bound to the pillars forever, referring to them both as her home and prison. How have you come to haunt these pillars? Cain refused the sacrifice. The pillar of balance, corrupted to its core, stands as a monument to his blind ambition. Now these pillars serve only to bind me here, my prison and eternal home, thanks to the avarice of your master, Cain. That bastard can claim no allegiance from me. Then we share a common foe, Raziel. Return here when you have need. Ariel remembers what others have forgotten. You know, I find it amusing that Ariel claims to remember what others have forgotten, but doesn't seem to recall her earlier meetings with Raziel in the distant past. I mean, from her perspective, she first met him in Defiance, just before the Collapse, and then in Soul Reaver 2 quite some time later, whereas from Raziel's perspective, he meets her for the first time in the distant future here, in Soul Reaver 1. Clearly, Raziel meeting Ariel out of chronological order complicates matters, and it is unclear how much Ariel does in fact remember of her prior meetings with the Wraith. Perhaps her non-imprisonment has affected her memory, but what I chalk it up to is the shifting of timelines. When Raziel comes across Ariel in the Sanctuary of the Clans, we are still in the second timeline, which as we know is altered by Raziel when he refuses to kill Cain in William's Chapel. This paradox causes a shift from Timeline 2 to Timeline 3, leading to Raziel threatening Mobius to send him back to the past so that he can meet the ancient vampire Janos Audrin. Of course, in this third timeline, Mobius instead propels Raziel into the future so that he can see the wasteland Cain created as a result of his selfish decision and equally deepen his resolve to find a way back to Janos' time. It is in this period where he meets an earlier version of Ariel, but my theory is that this meeting might not have happened at all if Raziel did end up killing Cain, as he was originally supposed to. If Cain died here, like Mobius had intended, then I see little point in the time streamer sending Raziel forward in time and could have just sent him back into the distant past, so that he can unintentionally lead the Seraphan to Janos witness the murder of the ancient vampire, and then pursue the Seraphim back to their stronghold, before being imprisoned by the Reaver. Likewise, this would explain how the Ariel we see in Soul Reaver 1 has no memory of Raziel from Defiance, because of the differences between Timeline 2 and Defiance's Timeline 4. If you have another theory, let me know down in the comments, but to me this is the most logical, and I prefer it to Ariel having memory loss due to the eons of long captivity. Whether any interaction between Ariel and Cain took place during the rise and fall of Cain's empire is never touched upon. However, as she was bound to the pillars in the Sanctuary of the Clans, which Cain had converted into his throne room, there's a decent chance that at some point, words may have passed between the two. There has been speculation among some fans that Ariel's musings and trouble recollections may have been what inspired Cain to find a third way out of the dilemma orchestrated for him, and thus motivated Cain to cast Raziel into the abyss and lure him into the past. Either way, it is clear that Ariel did at least have some bitter exchanges with Cain's servants, given her line to Raziel about the tyrant's creatures taunting her. Originally, in the first Soul Reaver storyline, Ariel was intended to have died in a similar manner to the way shown in Defiance, before that content was cut and the story revised. Once Raziel confronted Cain in his mountain retreat, Ariel would advise him that the only way to kill the tyrant is to strike her down with the Wraith Blade. Raziel would then gain the soul of the former Balanced Guardian, 
enabling him to do just that. Aerial sacrifice, as shown in the Chronoplast visions in Soul Reaver, was eventually played out for real, but in a far less confrontational manner in Defiance's Spirit Forge. At the climax of Defiance, when Raziel activates the Spirit Forge, the souls of all the Balanced Guardians are called upon for the final baptism of the Wraith Blade. Ariel is summoned and appears before Raziel as the manifestation of the former Balanced Guardians. No longer constrained by her personal vendetta against Cain, the veil is lifted from her eyes and she now understands what needs to happen in order to restore balance. She explains to Raziel that the sword must be rendered pure by spirit and instead of striking her down like he does in the cut version of Soul Reaver 1, Raziel gently reaches out and touches her hand. Ariel's soul is drawn into the Wraith Blade, purifying it and releasing her following centuries of torment. When examining Ariel's final scene, the way I interpret it is her being summoned from beyond the Soul Reaver era by the activation of the Spirit Forge to be brought back to the Blood Omen period of Nosgoth's history. This way, the timeline remains intact, with her meetings with Raziel in Soul Reaver 1 and 2 still taking place, which cannot otherwise occur if the younger, native Blood Omen era, Ariel, is the one that is restored. Before finishing this video, I want to pay tribute to Ariel's voice actor Anna Gunn, who would go on to betray Skylar, Walter White's wife, in one of the greatest TV shows of all time, Breaking Bad. Anna Gunn has betrayed Ariel in every game she features in since the beginning, and like the other voice actors, has brought an extraordinary level of talent to the series, and their voice work should never be forgotten. If you enjoyed this look into Ariel's character, please leave a like, and for more Legacy of Kane content, do subscribe. Now allow me to leave you with some words from our fallen balanced guardian, which carry wisdom for those who like Raziel, are sometimes driven by anger. Be wary, Raziel. Those blind with rage are by destiny ensnared.